Last question. Two 5.00 kilogram masses are positioned at the corner of a square and the center of a non-adjacent side, respectively. Find the gravitational field at the center of the square if each side is 1.00 meters. So, I have a little diagram here. Let's just scale it up quite a bit. So we have our two masses. We have M, M, and M, and they're the same. We're looking for the gravitational field right at the center here. And we know that each side is uh, each side is 1.00 meters. 1.00 meters. So if we want to find the gravitational field strength at the center, we need to find the G field from each individual mass. Now, little m on the right is going to produce a G field that points towards the right. I'm going to call that G1. Little m in the top left is going to create a G field that points towards it. I'm going to call it G2. Now, G1 is going to be stronger than G2 because, well, the center is closer to this right m than it is to the top left m. But if we can figure out these two vectors, we can just add them to find the net gravitational field strength. So let's, let's find G1. Well, gravitational field strength, some distance from an object, is G m over r squared, where m is what's producing the field. g is 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 Newton meters squared per kilogram squared. Uh, m is the mass of the object producing the field, and each one is 5 kilograms, 5.00 kilograms. And r is the distance from the center of the object to the location that we're looking at. Since it's one meter each side, then our R value, R1, is just 0 0.500 meters. So it's going to be times 0 0.500 meters, that whole thing squared. So that will give us our G field strength from the rightward mass. And we get 1.334 times 10 to the minus 9 newtons. And the direction is directly to the right. So that's going to be G1. 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 So now let's find the G field strength caused by. Um, caused by the second object, the one in the top left corner, G2. It's going to be G m over R2 squared. So it's still 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 newton meters squared per kilogram squared times the mass producing it. It's, it's another 5.00 kilogram mass. And the distance, uh, which we're going to call R2, R2. From this to the center, we need to find, well, if this is 0 0.5, and this is 0 0.5 meters, then R2 is just 0 0.5 meters times root 2, because it's a 45, 45, 90 triangle. So our distance is just 0 0.500 meters times root 2. We take that whole distance and square it to get our field strength. we get 6.67 times 10 to the minus 10 newtons. And the angle is, um, well, it's going to be 9135 degrees clockwise, or counterclockwise. Now, if we want to find the net gravitational field, we have to add these two vectors up. 
So we need to break them into components. Um, G1 is already broken into its components. It's just to the right. But G2, we need to break into G2X and G2Y. Since it points at an angle of 45 degrees, 45 degrees, it's also going to form a 45, 45, 90 triangle with, um, with its components. So that implies that G2X, the magnitude of G2X, is the same as the magnitude of G2Y, which is just going to be, well, it's the hypotenuse over root 2, 6.67 times 10 to the minus 10 newtons over root 2. because it's a special right triangle, which gives me 4.72 times 10 to the minus 10 newtons for both of our components. Now, the last thing we need to do is find the total x component, total y component, and then sum them to find the resultant. I'm going to do that over here on the left. Our total x, I'm going to write it as g total x, g total x, well, we have a rightward component from G1, so we can call that positive. It's going to be just G1. And then since G2 is to the left, we'll make that negative. So G1 minus G2x equals 1.334 times 10 to the 9 minus 9 newtons minus 4.72 times 10 to the minus 10 newtons. is 8.62 times 10 to the minus 10 newtons. And since it's positive, that means, since we chose right to be positive, that means it's to the right. G total y? Well, there's only one y component, so it's just the y component of G2y. It's going to be 4.72 times 10 to the minus 10 newtons. To find our result, we just add our two vectors. This one points up, this one points to the right, so we have a rightward vector. That's 8.62 times 10 to the minus 10. An upward vector, that's 4.72 times 10 to the minus 10. Now our resultant is the hypotenuse that connects the start to the end. That's going to be g total. This is our angle here. So g total is just the square root of g total x squared plus g total y squared. So we can take uh, 8.62 times 10 to the minus 10 squared plus 4.72 times 10 to the minus 10, that whole thing squared, and then raise them to the 0.5 power. So the square root we get 9.83 times 10 to the minus 10 newtons. And then to find the direction, it's just going to be inverse tan of g total y over g total x. Opposite over adjacent. So we plug in inverse tan of 4.72 over 8.62. I'm going to answer in degrees. So I make sure my calculator is in degree mode before I take that inverse tan, and I get 28 degrees. And so it's 28 degrees counter clockwise from right. Okay, so there's the magnitude and direction of our net gravitational field caused by two different masses. We have to find the individual gravitational field vectors from each mass, and we have to add the vectors to find the resultant. That's all. Hope that was helpful. Bye.